it still is the number one question I get. How much money do you have? How long is it going to last? What are you going to do when it runs out? Um, well, we have enough money to make it all the way through this year. Even with an accelerated budget, we'll make our way into 2014. Uh, in 2014, we probably will have to do something to uh, raise more money. Frankly, I'm not that worried about it. With all of the approaches we're getting now, I think we have several mechanisms to uh, raise money. Um, uh, farm out options are still on the table. I get, as I said, contacted very often with our neighbors trying to farm in. Uh, I think there's uh, equity, equity available. Uh, um, uh, the, the, the raise we did, two thirds of our raise was done by three people. Uh, the last 232 million, they've all said that they would like to participate in the next round. Um, and then we've also had approaches about strategic investments in the company from, from bigger firms and from uh, actually other oil companies. So honestly, I'm not that worried about financing. I think uh, as long as we keep finding oil, we're going to have a lot of time financing oil and alternatives. Uh, but the market uh, uh, definitely is. Uh, I do take the point that was also made about telegraphing our financing. I think we're not going to be announcing when we're in a finance anymore. I think we'll be opportunistic in this and, and take the uh, take, uh, Take money when it's offered, uh, so to speak. So uh, we we are having a very uh, big budget this year, 566 million dollars gross. Our net of that is 228 million. So this is a very uh, uh, aggressive uh, expiration campaign this year. We do get a bit of uplift because uh, 43 million of, uh, of our budget is being paid uh, for on our behalf by Marathon this year and, and even early next year. So um, the other thing I like quite a bit is that. Uh, Almost 90% of our budget is drilling in size. So we're spending our money putting it in the ground and creating value, not a lot on the um, uh, overhead and fees associated with some of their expiration successes in Norway. So I think uh, we've gone from 173 million to 21 billion just in these companies alone. And I think uh, we're, we're starting to understand how to create value in, in these resource companies. I will say a few words about the CSR. Um, this is probably, I'm spending about 75% of my time on this now. As most of you know, I moved to Nairobi last uh, September. Uh, I've been working a lot with both the government, I've been working a lot with all, all the sta stakeholders involved, from the Leakey Foundation, uh, the, the Fossil Hominoid Research Group, to the Wildlife Trust, that uh, administers a lot of wildlife in many areas where we work, and also really with the local people uh, to make sure that uh, we do everything possible to make sure that this oil is a blessing and not a curse. I think right now we're, we're getting very good traction. I think uh, the, the, uh, we're all a little concerned about the election and the return of election violence that, that uh, was there in 2007. It's actually come out very well. I think the election came off uh, about as good as anyone could have hoped. I think uh, people are moving on now. And uh, uh, I spent quite a bit of my time working with local communities and working to, to deal with issues like transparency, with capacity building, and with revenue sharing and revenue planning. I am convinced any resource that's found in the country, be it fresh water, be it good agricultural soil, be it minerals, be it oil, is a blessing. And the only thing that can turn it into a curse is, is basically getting it. So um, this is a big focus for us, and we spend a lot of time and effort on it. And I'm convinced that uh, um, everyone works together to we'll become a, a very positive outcome. So I think summarize, you know, we have the best onshore acreage position in East Africa. I don't think anyone would debate that, and it's becoming uh, the most common exploration location. Pradeep and I can argue whether uh, whether Erbil or Nairobi is the exploration capital of the world, but the bottom line is they're both pretty damn good places to do business. Um, Gami and Twiga discoveries have now de-risked the local Karatoa Basin, and we will make a number of more discoveries there. I don't think it's a question of whether those wells are going to be discoveries. I think it's a question of how big and how thick and how good the pay is. Uh, we'll see a very high success rate for local car base. Again, we've ramped up activities. Uh, three rigs now is going to that. We've, we've mobilized three more rigs. We're still going to get that seven to ten miles we promised in 2013 with this increased rig count. And we are doing much better on drilling these more efficiently. We're learning a lot of lessons. We're changing out our mud program. I think you're going to see us going down to 60 day wells from the 120 day wells that we have been doing. So that's a big push for us. It's not inherently obvious, but we spend the same amount of money no matter how many wells we build, because almost all of our accounts are fixed. We're paying for the rigs, the service companies, the people every day. So if we can get rigs, if we can get wells down to 60 days, we can drill twice as well, many wells with the same amount of money. That's that's a big focus for us now. Again, 
I think this is the biggest thing we'll do in the next uh, year, year or two is open up new phases. Uh, I think we will see a step change going up as we find more oil in the ocean trail basin, but uh, if, if people understand this story, every time we open a new basin, that's another one to three billion barrel type uh, targets that uh, we do this. I think, watch that space, but I think uh, uh, the Savisa, the, 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 the Block 9 wells, the Tubahar wells, those are going to be big wells for us. So again, we've got a very strong balance sheet, we have a very strong person behind us in Mr. Lundin, who uh, has enough money in his checkbook to, to keep us going just in case uh, we run into trouble. But uh, I, I'm not worried about funding, uh, even though I think the rest of the world is. I think the, the research coverage from the analysts uh, um, are, are right on track. I think they're, they're, even now they're giving us a, an average share price of $11.41. I think they understand this is not a single well play. You know, our, our clock seems to react dramatically for every well and every test and every rumor that's out there. But uh, if you look at the long-term shareholders, the, the bigger funds, they're holding it for the play. So there will be ups and downs. There'll be some wells that are better than others. There just aren't many places on earth you can have this type of uh, exploration potential. So hopefully you're all going to be having the same dreams as I have now. So you can all go, go home, go to bed, and dream about all those prospects and all those discoveries. Um, I will put up the guys that we have. We've got a couple of new additions in here that we haven't met. Uh, Nick Walker, I think, has been a great addition. Um, we got him. Uh, we used to have him in Malaysia with London Petroleum. Uh, he did a great job there, and then he's with Caliban for a long time. So he's coming as CEO. A very good job in working with Alex to get our costs and our operations down. Also, Alex Button, who has uh, just recently joined us, he's doing external relations, working with the government. He's in charge of our CSR program. He's in charge of, 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 of again, trying to make the oil, uh, oil, oil uh, blessing uh, out of this process. And I'll, I'll let you read the cautionary statements, but they basically tell you not to, uh, not to believe anything I just told. <laughs> All right, I think we probably have a time for a few questions, Robert. Can you repeat Can the question, please? So he's saying basically by 2014, we drilled 28 wells. We have a pretty good idea of what those are worth, but there are going to be still some unrisk resources. You know, what type of value per barrel do we think we'll get? Do we think we'll get any uh, value for the uh, undrilled prospect, for the exploration prospect? Is that a fair So, you know, I, I think we've got two years of drilling left. I think uh, if you look at the uh, I think 25 to 30 wells is kind of what um, we need to drill to understand what we've got. We won't have de-risked everything by then, but we'll have drilled in every one of these sub-basins. We'll have figured out which one of them work and which don't. They're not all going to work, but uh, I think it's very unlikely that, you know, that we drill one basin and it works and then the rest of the basins don't. So I think we'll see two or three or maybe even four basins that work. And then once we hit one of those basins, we've got to get in and drill enough prospects to kind of risk the play and then people will start paying us for that, uh, that upside. As far as the long-term strategy, I think we have kind of two ways to go. Uh, I think we've been talking with Paulo and I think we have a, a joint idea of what we want to do is together at some point and probably, you know, we actually believe we've got a development project right now. So we need to spend some more time and money and build some more wells to prove it to our reserve auditor and to the rest of the world. But Internally, we've seen enough now that we're pretty confident we've got a development project in the low base our basin as well. Uh, uh, low base our basin alone. So, one of the things we're talking about with Paulo is um, go forward and de-risk these reserves. Uh, basically, to the point we've got two key reserves that are commercial development with a development plan in place. So we actually have a development team working now on issues like the pipeline, the terminal, uh, environmental impact, social impact. Hydro to uh, figure out you know, the water needs that we've got. And we want to put that all into a nice package. We think if we've got a package of, let's pick a number, half a billion to a billion barrels of net reserves, 
deep learning like that, and it's been de risked to the point where it's too deep with the development plan approved by the governor. There'll be a, a long line of people standing to, to get those reserves. Uh, it's just very hard to find those kind of reserves on, on Pacific. Uh, if you look at Shell, they had a 36% reserve replacement this year. The majors are just struggling trying to replace reserves. And the only way they can do it is buying guys like that. Uh, like the, the Tullos, the Bundy Petroleums, the African Oils, the Shamanons, those, those are the guys that are finding oil these days, the old Peters. Uh, the big guys can't find oil. But our primary plan is to bring in strategic partners. Um, the reason we like that idea is basically um, there would be one, one number that would be negotiated. And that would be how much interest can we keep and be fully carried through development. So this is what Tala did in, in Uganda. They brought in Sinai and Total, and they're fully carried through development, and they still ended up keeping basically a third of, of, of the interest. So depending on how successful we are, how many new basins we open up, that will tell us how much we can keep. Somewhere, I guess, between 20 and 35 percent working interest carried through development. And, uh, and that's our number one goal. And the, re the number one uh, strategic uh, alternative. The reason we like that are, are twofold. One, as you properly say, two years from now, we're still not going to really know the potential of these basins. It allows us to stay in the basin, continue to do exploration, and continue to get upside but not have to go out and dilute ourselves anymore. We have to full carry through development, we don't have to raise any more money. The second thing is that there is likely going to be a capital gains tax imposed if we exit completely. We, we will never say never, I mean, if the price is right, and the dollar amount is right, uh, you know, there will be a, a cash exit at some point, but uh, we, will, we will expect to pay as Cole was paying in Mozambique, as uh, Heritage had to pay in uh, Uganda, that there will be an exit tax somewhere between 10 and 20% capital gains tax. That will not be imposed if, if we stay in the project and just have development vanish and going forward. So I think there's a number of alternatives. I think it's pretty early to give too much conjecture. We do believe that the barrels, and if you look at our 21 analysts, people value the barrels in the ground either five to $10 a barrel uh, in the ground. So I like to do the very simple math. You know, we think the Lokachar Basin alone one to three billion barrels. Tullow has stated that as well. Take the midpoint of that two billion barrels. Say that's one billion net to us. Take the low point of the, the valuation range, which is five dollars a barrel. That's five billion dollars of value creation. If you do the simple math, that's twenty dollars a share. So to me, the disaster scenario, we don't find any other basin that work. Um, we get the lowest price uh, that uh, our, our analysts think is reasonable, it's still a $20 a share stock. Uh, you start taking the dream scenario, and this is the ones I dream while I'm laying at night. You start opening up new basins, you start stacking those numbers on top of each other. So to me, that's where we need to stay. We don't want to sell out too early. We don't want to basically walk away. We don't, you know, I think neither Lucas or I wants to be the idiots that had the entire new North Sea drilled three exploration wells and then sold it off too cheap. So we need to stay in for a while. We need to drill enough wells to know what we've got. But at some point we're gonna get where the expectation value and the real value are gonna start converging and then it's time to, to monetize. Besides the three words, yeah. What effect now is that going to be the economics of the Well I think I prefer to let that so he's saying uh, our, our prospects are growing. We had a hundred and then we were up to 120 and I talked about 130. The reason that I say that is, you know, we've got three seismic teams working, so we're, we're developing new prospects every day. Um, um, and he asked, what does that what does that translate to the perspective of those resources? Uh, and my answer there is, uh, I prefer to wait and let our reserve officers give that number. So let's let's give it to the independent folks and let them come up with a number. I think that's a, probably a better number to give to the market. One question over here. Yeah, I think what I said to the Swedish journalists about Octa buying us out is that uh, we wouldn't be interested in selling at the same price that they paid to our, our partner. And I think that that's worn us out. Uh, you know, if we, if we were 
of sold. I think that translated to maybe two dollars, thirty-two cents a share, or something like that, if you take the equivalent price. But so I think it's pretty deep at the helm, and with politics developing, we, we see that there's a lot more upside. And again, we thought um, at the time that they sold would be way too early. I think with politics developing, with the field size growing, and with the, the market improving, I think we'll do much better than what the, the top offer was at the time. They never actually physically offered us that amount. The, the question was, would we sell the taco? The taco, taco. Um, yeah, and the answer I gave to the press was no, I, uh, I don't think we would consider selling at that price. So. Perfect, thank you. I think uh, maybe we should take any further questions. We're kind of running out of time here, but if there are any more questions. I'm afraid these chairs, look, these chairs look way too comfortable. The fee center needs will be outside, it will be standard outside. And thank you very much for coming, and we'll be back uh, in the fall. See you in the